you can propagate poinsettias with very low light. And I think it's important to take the, the infrared from the sunlight off of the cutting. You don't need much light in the first few days. And it's very important to get that cutting healed. Um, you're all about keeping that cutting turgid. That's the key um, when in, as it establishes. So low, too low light level is almost an impossible thing to do when you stick a cutting. Yes, there's some bottom limits, but uh, without, with, with, with the exception of pulling a blackout, um, you can pretty much shade it deeply. And that will help, especially if you're in a hot climate or it's very hot conditions. Um, the most difficult aspect of, of, of the environment on, on propagation is keeping it cool enough for the poinsettias. And in most regions, at the time of year you're propagating poinsettias, our biggest challenge is heat. So far, we haven't had radical heat this year during sticking season, so knock on wood, we're going to con continue that trend. But it's a big, big issue. Maintain high humidity around it. Keep your floors wet. You just definitely need to, to create an environment, uh, especially in the first few days of just humid and, and in, as cool and as shady as you can make it. Once they get established, then you can begin to uh, in, increase uh, the, the amount of light you can give them or increase, reduce the amount of humidity and mist. Don't over mist. It's very important. Uh, you want to mist to keep the leaves turgid. They sh you, you don't want to see the back side of the leaves. When they turn over and they're showing you the white, that means they're starting to dry out. But you don't want to over mist. You don't want water standing everywhere. Free water standing in, in tissue, especially if you've got some wetting agent uh, involved, you can hyper saturate that tissue. Um, you have to be careful with the wetting agents. You don't want to use too much because if it gets too deep into the tissue, uh, you'll get some breakdown on those those growing tips. But capsule is a great thing to make the mist, mist more efficient. It helps to keep the water spread over and you don't have to mist as often. Gary, I just if I can add one thing on on yeah. uh, the environment there in stage one, I, you know, traveling around and visiting growers, of course, we're not doing that so much this year, but, <laughs> but in the past and in my previous experience in propagation, it's it's really the highlight that, that gets you into trouble in that stage yeah. one situation, because if you don't shade enough, you, too much heat ends up in the, you know, too much radiation ends up in the compartment. Uh, the, the temperatures go too high. You get a, additional disease pressure. You have to mist more, you know, it just creates a really challenging cycle. And so I just, I don't think we can emphasize enough the need to get the light levels down, especially in highlight areas. And a lot of that is not letting the light ever get into the compartment. So painting the roof, you know, getting up in the gutters and putting paint on the roof and keeping that radiation out of the compartment is really an important part of, uh, of success for stage one in prop. I've, I've been in, in, in situations where we pulled black out, uh, pulled black cloth and just left about a foot gap open under the gutters and then misted those edges like crazy to try to uh, manage the rest of the environment and keep the whole mass, the infrared energy in that mass low enough so that the whole greenhouse didn't heat up too much. It wasn't pretty, but it worked quite effectively. So yeah, yeah and it's on our slide, we've got less than 2,000 foot candles. I mean, you can get down into the 1,000 to 1,250 to, to 1,500 and, and be okay, especially absolutely. in the first few days. Absolutely. At the beginning, I don't, like I said, I don't think you can be too dark in the beginning. Yeah. Um, I really don't. But okay. then as they, as they can begin to heal, then you can begin to wean them into more light, just leave your shades open longer uh, in the mornings. Um, maybe uh, uh, on cloudy days, keep them open, things like that as, as you progress. Yeah. So, yep. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think moisture management is, 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 is critical um, here right now. And, and Jason, I want you to take over the conversation. All right. So let's talk uh, moisture management. You know, we we're just talking about environment. Gary was talking about mist. Um, you know, whether you're using fog or whether you're using booms to mist the cuttings, the environment, the humidity in that compartment is important. But we also have to think about soil moisture. So, um, you know, during propagation, especially in the first few days, soil moisture is it's important that we're, we've got moist soil, that the products or the, the media is pretty wet. Uh, too dry is certainly a problem because it can pull moisture away from that cutting. Um, and too wet is going to be a challenge as you get towards the end of stage one, but you'd rather err on the side of a little bit too wet. So, you know, at Ball and Selecta, we talk a lot about uh, a, a level one through five uh, media moisture management or media scale. 
Um, we like to be around a level four, which is wet, but not saturated. Um, that's kind of the sweet spot there. And as I said, as you get towards the end of stage one and you're callusing and starting to initiate roots, that's when you really need to be uh, very mindful of where your soil moisture uh, is. So then, you know, we talk about um, misting and, and controlling the, the humidity within the environment. For most growers, it's, it's most likely either a, a drop down four way emitter or it's a boom running over the top of, of, the, uh, of the crop. In this case, you can see this, this is direct stuck uh, poinsettias on the floor. And this product is, um, is, you know, as you look at it, if the, if the boom's running over the top of that, you can see how much soil is actually showing. So I think this is just a good picture to indicate that every time a mist event or every time a boom passes over the crop, top of that crop, an enormous amount of that water is actually going in the soil. It's not hitting the leaf and, and, and maintaining the turgidity of that cutting so much as it is saturating the soil. So uh, it is a challenge. I per personally prefer direct sticking uh, my poinsettias, you know, mm -hmm. eliminate that, that, that uh, the cost of liner production and the transplant. But uh, you do have to be mindful of that. Now, if you've got a, a good well-drained mix, you can still keep some, some air in that soil. And, uh, but it's just something to be mindful of. I think that picture really just illustrates how much soil surface is showing in, in, uh, in a direct stick. I think the point area. can't be overstated, though, when you're running a boom, um, just knowing what that nozzle is putting out for that mist event. You don't want a high volume. You want a very fine mist. So you, you do have a little bit of dry down in that media. Um, I've seen people try to do direct stick where they just have too much volume going down for a, an event and you're just sitting at, they eventually get to a level five and you're just sitting in a saturated mess and that'll eventually uh, delay your callusing. Yeah, and that's definitely the, the number one problem you see in direct stick is too much water and how you mitigate that, keeping the, 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 the leaves turgid without super saturating the soil. Um, as James pointed out, you know, things you, you can do uh, mitigating, especially in boom scenarios is I've seen, you know, tilting the boom horizontally so that the, that the boom or even tilting it upward slightly so that the, the more mist will go up and then fall down. I think there's merits to that in disease management as well as the, as the mist isn't going down and, you know, mist will come down and go like this from a, a fan nozzle pointing downward. If the nozzle is arced like this, it's just going to rain down on top. So you're less lateral movement more stays in the air. Um, I've seen uh, to great effect uh, mounting a uh, sort of a fine mist type propagation nozzle, a Netafin uh, propagation mist nozzle on booms. Um, and that's an extraordinarily nice effect. It, it, again, less actual water is getting into the soil, but you're putting a lot of water into the environment. That's the key. The other thing I is- mean, I, Ideally, it's, yeah. Ideally, we're increasing relative humidity and and not putting water directly on the plant, right? We don't necessarily want free moisture. We want very high relative humidity. The other thing on, on booms is, you know, make sure you, the speed of that boom is going as fast as it can go without the boom itself starting to fall apart. So, you know, slow boom passes are great for, for irrigating crops, but they're not great for misting crops. So keep your speed yeah. up. Um, make, sure you, good make sure you get the right nozzle on there. Uh, put a fine nozzle uh, for no sure. Worries. Oh, 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 oh,